All right, what's up, everybody? My name is Aaron Dowd. I am the podcast dude. You might have heard me on podcasts before, but this is the first video I think I've ever done. So hope you enjoy it. Uh, just wanted to give you a heads up. I'm working on getting a better setup going. I got a Canon T2i DSLR and a pretty good lens. I got a backdrop and some lighting. I'm not quite happy with it, so I'm not using the Canon yet. It just doesn't doesn't quite meet the standards that I want, but that's all going to get fixed up in the future. I'm going to get it rolled out. It's going to be great. So today I want to talk to you guys about EQ and EQ is just a tool, a plugin that I use to shape the way audio sounds. So it helps me control issues that I hear. Sometimes there are a lot of harsh frequencies in the high end, in the, the kind of the bright range of the frequency spectrum. A lot of people call that treble. And sometimes there are problems with the bass frequencies or the mid range. You get room echo sometimes that all that happens in the mid range, the frequencies between 300 and 1200. So I'm going to explain that in a little bit more detail and I'll show you what I mean. But just so you guys know, EQ is how to fix imbalances in your audio tracks. And it's great to learn. It's really important. I've said that if I could only have two plugins, I would take an equalizer and a compressor because I could solve probably 90% of audio problems I hear with just those two plugins, maybe stacking them on top of each other. <laughs> That's a subject for another time. Anyway, so this screencast is going to be about EQ. Two things you need to know. Good microphones are easier to work with. I don't have to do as much EQ on a microphone like this Shure SM7B right here or a higher quality microphone. They give you a good balance from lows to highs. The cheaper microphones don't. You'll often hear the higher end frequencies sound bad or there's just kind of an imbalance. So just know that if you're working with cheap microphones, you're going to have a bad time. Another thing to know is that headphones matter when you're mixing. When you're listening back, you need headphones that are going to show you that <laughs> you need headphones that are going to let you hear what your audio actually sounds like. Consumer headphones like these earbuds that I use for listening. Uh, Beats and a lot of other headphones, they they adjust certain frequency ranges. Like they'll boost the high end a little bit, or they'll they'll boost the bass. So you're not actually hearing what the recording sounds like. You're hearing a mixed version of that. And when you're trying to make adjustments for everyone, you know you want to when you mix, you want to think about is the person listening in the car? Are they listening on nice headphones? Are they listening on cheap headphones? You're trying to look, you're trying to get an accurate picture of what that audio actually sounds like. And you don't need to be listening through consumer headphones that mess with the way it sounds. You want some mixing headphones like these Sony MDR 7506s. These are made for mixing. These are made to give you a unaltered sound. So this is just good to know. Both those things, microphones are important. Headphones are important. If you're going to be mixing a lot of podcasts, get some good headphones. I like the Sony MDR 7506s, but anything probably I'd say above $60 that's meant for mixing will do you pretty solid. So, all right, that's enough talking for now. I'm going to jump into the screencast. Hope you guys enjoy it. I will see you again next time. So I want to show you Logic Stock EQ plugin. There are several different kinds of EQ plugins, but I'm going to focus on Logic's 8-band EQ plugin and GarageBand's 3-band EQ plugin. And GarageBand does have an 8-band EQ nearly identical to Logic's, but it's a little bit harder to use, so I'll show you that in a little bit. So let me pull up Logic's stock EQ plugin. I can either double-click on this little box right here right next to EQ, which will bring up the plugin, or I can insert it into the plugin space right here by clicking on an empty slot, selecting EQ, channel EQ, mono, since my track is mono. So this is the plugin. Lots of, uh, lots of pretty colors, right? So if you've never seen or used a plugin before, you might be wondering, what the heck is all this stuff? What are all these numbers? What's this line? What does the vertical lines mean? What are all these little shapes at the top? So let me give you a quick overview of this. I'm sure many of you are familiar with bass, mid-range, and treble. So you've got low, mid, high. Well, this is just a visual representation of that. The entire 
frequency range that humans can hear is between 20 and 20,000 hertz. So 20K just stands for 20,000. So when you play a track back, I'll do that real quick, but I'll mute the track. And I turn on this analyzer right here. This is great. These are the frequencies that have been recorded. Everything in the bass over here on the left, everything in the middle, and then the top end. You'll notice that there is generally more energy here in the mid-range, more volume, more gain. And that's because the majority of the energy in someone's voice is in the mid-range. But the bass frequencies provide warmth and richness, and the higher frequencies provide clarity and brightness. One of the most common places to start is the high pass filter. So that's this guy over here. I click on it. This gray area represents frequencies that are being reduced, or in this case, eliminated by the EQ plugin. And I can select the range that I want. Currently, it's cutting 48 decibels per octave. So it's a kind of like a roll off. Everything below here is being cut. I can grab this number right here and move it up. So if I want to cut all the frequencies below 100, that's the way to do it. And you generally do this because there's not a lot of frequencies below 60 that humans can really hear, or in this case, they, they don't contribute to someone's speaking voice. So let me, let me unmute the track and show you what all the frequencies down here sound like by using the high pass filters brother low pass filter. So this is the exact opposite. It'll cut frequencies from the high end. And let me roll all the way down here. So currently all these frequencies have been eliminated and now we're only listening to everything below 68 Hertz. Check this out. You may not even be able to hear it because your speakers don't, don't really play <laughs> low frequencies like that very well. So if I boost all this, there it's just kind of like, what is that? You can't even hear it. So you don't need those frequencies. You need that that freedom to be able to uh, that's weird, right? say no Let's try to that more again. things. I would encourage you to listen to Cutting the high end. Where we talk about the day job of your foundation. Cutting the mid-range. Let's go the other way. Turn on the high pass filter. Cutting everything below 200. Let's open this up. But I think... So this currently we can only hear the frequencies between 200 and 1,000. part of scarcity mindset, and you want to be in this totally different place, and it seems Open so it up. far away. I wouldn't jump to, like, okay, just This is what the frequencies mindset. between 1,000 and 5,000 sound like. Dig yourself out. You gotta start Open it up saying, some more. Okay, I, I got to say no to scarcity mindset before I can even say yes to something else. So the frequencies between 5,000 and 20,000. So all of these together make up what you normally hear on recordings. You can't afford to make certain decisions. You Pretty can't crazy, afford right? to take on. So you want to try to use the filters that you have to clean up the audio, to remove any frequencies that don't sound good, to remove any ranges that don't sound good. You've got high pass filters, shelves, peak filters, which can be used to boost or cut in a very, very narrow range. Or if you grab the Q down here, that's this number at the very bottom, and pull down on your mouse, you get a broader cut. If you roll up, you get a narrower cut. So you got four of those peak filters, and then you've got a shelf again up here, which will just let you boost or reduce the high end. And then you've got a low pass filter, which I showed you earlier, can be used to roll off the frequencies on the top end, remove those, this gray area right here. So that's a general overview. And now I'm gonna show you how I use these various filters to shape the sound of a vocal track. Okay, so here are some of the common problems that you can fix with EQ plugins. The first one is pops. So someone will record a track without a pop filter They'll be too close to the mic, and when they say any words that start with P, you get this pop.
popping sound. It's it's a bunch of frequencies between 80 and 120 hertz. I actually took the windscreen off my SM7B and recorded a couple of those words so you can hear what it sounds like. It's not pretty. Perfect. Powerful. Pajamas. P -p -p so that's gross. You don't want that. So let's, of course, get a loop it and I'll show you how to EQ that out. Perfect. Powerful. A lot of energy down here. Pajamas. P -p -p. Okay, so it looks like a lot of energy around 50 hertz. So what you can do is actually grab your high pass filter and roll it up to about 100. Let's see how that sounds. Perfect. Powerful. Pajamas. Okay, that's better, but now what you've done is cut all the other bass frequencies in the rest of the track. Your voice isn't going to sound as deep or full. So it's better to record with a pop filter. If you're EQing someone else's track, tell them to buy a pop filter. Or just buy a pop filter and send it to them. So again, I'm going to show you the difference there. Perfect. Powerful. Pajamas. P -p -p -p. Perfect. Powerful. Pajamas. So that's kind of a trade-off, but that's one way to get rid of peas. So another common problem I see is a lot of room sound or echo in a track. Let me show you what that sounds like. So I've got a track I was working on earlier this week. And check this out. I'm going to turn the volume down a little bit because this track needs compression and I'm not going to go into compression today. So I'm going to cut this a little bit. Take a listen. I don't know if that was the intent. The intent for me was, I have a lot of good stuff. I want to share it. Ruby is some fantastic. So you can hear a lot of room sound in this track. Endless amounts of fun. And if we take a listen and watch the frequencies, fun programming, and I want to share that with other. A lot people. of that so room echo is happening happen. between 300 and about a thousand hertz. So I can actually grab one of these peak filters and make a cut. First I do a boost, and this is you can this is actually called sweeping. If you boost your peak filter all the way up, so you're increasing this range of frequencies by 24 decibels, which is quite a lot of volume, you can hear what you're boosting, so then you can decide what to cut. Because, let's also be fair, at least at the time, I was certainly heavily influenced by the Java frameworks. Java was really the only so there's a lot of room sound right here between 350 and about 420. So let's find a, a spot that sounds particularly bad. ...that I was exposed to that had this notion of frameworks. But it was pretty well developed at the time. And then cut it. Um, it was struts was one of the major ones back in the day. Let's practice opening up the cue a little bit, which is just how wide of a cut you're making. So you can go either really broad or really narrow by pulling up and down on the mouse or grabbing these lines right here and moving in and out. So something in there, you don't want to go too crazy. Uh, when I got started working, there was a couple of other things, but there was enough That's too there much. for me to learn from. So certainly by no means was uh, Rails like an original idea as, as sort of a framework. Perhaps the thing that I tried to push and was sort of original at the time was the notion of the full stack. That Rails would ship with the whole thing, the whole enchilada. It would not be this compilation of just loosely... That's pretty good right there. I've cut about 7 decibels at about 400. So I'm still hearing a lot of room sound, so I'm going to grab another peak band and come over here. I think it's somewhere around 700 hertz. Couple the ideas that you had to piece together and configure yourself, because that was one Ooh. of the things I truly hated about the, the Java approach. Oh yeah, that's bad right there. Let's cut that. Terrible. All right. Right? That every single project, when they started out, they had to spend a week just configuring the bits and selecting the <laughs> bits even, which required researching the bits and contrasting. Okay, so I'm pretty good with that right there. What else? So I'm, I always listen back to tracks and, and try to listen and say, is there enough bass? Is there too much bass? Is there room sound that I can cut out? And then... What about the high end? Are there any frequencies in the highs that need to be cut? Or is 
there's just too much brightness, too much room, not room sound, but almost airiness. I think the bits and I just thought, wow, there's just... Take a listen to everything above 5K. Of course, I should loop the track. Here we go. Professional right here, guys. So that's very crackly. So that's what the high end of this track sounds like. Ruby is a fantastic programming language that I'm having endless amounts of fun programming and I want to share that with other people. So let's make that happen because let's also be So fair. what I'm actually going to do is roll off some of that high end. See if I can't reduce that crackling, the kind of background noise a little bit. It was... I have a lot of good stuff. I want to share it. Ruby is a fantastic programming language that I'm having endless amounts of fun programming and I want to share that with other people. So let's make that happen because let's also be fair, at least at the time, I was certainly heavily influenced by- To hear the difference there, you hear that hiss? It was, I have a lot of good stuff. I want to share it. Ruby is a fantastic programming language that I'm having endless amounts of fun programming and I want to share that with other people, so. Okay, so that's how I would fix that problem. Another common problem spot is right around 2200 hertz. And this is just kind of a, for whatever reason, this frequency generally sounds bad. So let's play back. It was, I have a lot of good stuff. I want to share it. Ruby is a fantastic programming language that I'm having endless amounts of fun programming. And I want to share that with other people. So let's make that happen. Because let's also be fair, at least at the time, I was certainly heavily influenced by the Java frameworks. Java cool. So let's take a listen to what that sounds like without those EQ changes. It was, I have a lot of good stuff. I want to share it. Ruby is a fantastic programming language that I'm having endless amounts of fun programming and I want to share that with other people. So let's make that happen because let's also be fair, at least at the time, I was certainly heavily influenced by the Java frameworks. Java was really the- and it sounds like this track was recorded on a laptop microphone, just a built-in mic on a MacBook or something, which, you know, compared to Sean's track does not sound very good. Okay, so I know I'm running a little bit long on time, but I wanted to show you guys two things real quick. I've pulled up a project in GarageBand and added a track to it. And if I go up here and show smart controls or hit B on my keyboard, this brings up a compressor EQ plugin. GarageBand used to be a little bit more powerful, but they've simplified things. So not going to talk about compression today, but if you hit this little switch, make sure the light's on, you've got a kind of a three band EQ. So you can cut or boost the lows, cut or boost the mids, cut or boost the highs. And you've got a low cut filter similar to the high pass filter in Logic that removes the low frequencies. So you probably want to use that. And the mid frequencies, I don't know how that's different from the mid <laughs> knob, honestly, but you've also got in GarageBand a eight band EQ similar to Logic's, almost identical. So same kind of deal. You select your filter, you adjust the frequency, move it back and forth. You can change the slope and the cue. So something like this guy you can grab it, move it up and down. If you want to adjust the cue. So it works about the same. Anyways, I just wanted to show you that if you do not have a copy of Logic, but you do have a copy of GarageBand, then all the stuff you learned that I showed you will still apply here. So, all right, that's it for now, guys. I hope this was useful. Let me know if you have any questions. Drop them in the comments or send me an email. You can head over to my website, thepodcastdude.com. Get in touch. Also, like and subscribe. That helps me out. I will talk to you guys later. Have a great day.